welcome back friends we are talking about mass spectroscopy and we have discussed about the ionization process now we have discussed about the basics of mass spec and we have discussed the process uh, step by step process of how mass spec uh, is done and then we have seen uh, how to analyze the mass spec graph which is generated by the computer system now uh, one thing we haven't discussed about yet that is a uh, different type of mass spec nowadays which are available and in this video we will be talking about two such type of mass spec instruments and analyzers which are called one of them is called MALDI and another is called ESI so we will be talking about MALDI and ESI though they are different things they are utilized in different mechanisms in different reasons we will be seeing all of them now let us first talk about MALDI in this particular part MALDI, the full name of MALDI is uh, Matrix Assisted Matrix M for Matrix A for Assisted Laser Desorption Ionization Spectroscopy or sometimes another term TOF was at is attached to the MALDI. It is called the MALDI top. So we call it top means time of flight. Okay. So matrix assisted laser desorption ionization time of flight. It is called the MALDI top. It's mouthful of name, right? But uh, the process is a, uh, extremely simple, and you uh, you are about to know the process. And what is the process of MALDI top? Uh, I'm not going to discuss about again the whole mechanism of uh, mass spec, but the simple region where every every of different mass spec differs are the source region and the process of ionization. This part is varying from time to time. Otherwise, the main principle remains the same. That means we need to generate the parent ions, right? Now when you generate the parent ions, the second step from all the different type of mass spec will be the same because the parent ion will be moved to the, ma to the ma magnetic field outside and then it will behave differently in the magnetic field. By changing the magnetic field, we can select a particular type of fragment ion species from there. And as it is traveling the analyzer, those molecular ions will further be divided into the fragments. We call them fragment ions. Then those fragment ions are going to hit the detector and detector will detect it. Now in this case, uh, the varying thing in any case of MALDI or ESI. Now if I write here ESI, the full form of ESI is electro spray ionization. So it's called electrospray ionization and sometimes GS is attached to it. It is called gas, sorry, GC is attached to it. It's called gas chromatography. Okay. I hope you all know what chromatography is, so I'm not going to talk, talk about that. So G, GC or HPLC is also attached to it. HPLC means high performance. or high pressure sorry liquid chromatography okay so these are all about the abbreviations now let's look at the procedure now procedure the major thing i have discussed remains the same but the difference is the generation of the molecular ion because we require this, right? We require both of this process will require this. This is the molecular ion and to generate this all the things are set. So we are setting up all the things, all the instruments to get this part because when we get this part, it will further fragmentalize into something like that. So we must have this parent ion first. These are the fragment ions. So we need to generate it and we need to generate it from a sample or a molecule of our interest. Now this is our goal of generation of that. 
Now the process will vary from only the conversion of M to M plus and here also the M to M plus. So in any kind of mass spec, this part will vary, rest of the part remains the same. Now we are going to see in case of Maldi top how the M is converted into M plus dash. Now how it is converted? In case of Malditov, what we are doing, we are utilizing these molecules or sample of our interest. Now we take our sample and we place into a matrix. A matrix. Now the matrix here is made up with uh, some chemical. Now the chemical uh, we utilize to produce the matrix here is generally 2,4, Benzoic acid and cinnamic acid. So, this benzoic acid and cinnamic acid they act as the chemical cross linkers to produce the matrix. Now, we provide the sample onto the matrix. The matrix at the beginning is liquefied, then we press the sample, and then uh, we allow this to be solidified, and it is solidified and produces a sample with matrix now the solid matrix is there and sample is entrapped onto the matrix here which is made up with cinnamic acid and benzoic acid now this benzoic acid and cinnamic acid they are having the aromatic rings now having this aromatic rings are very very important having aromatic rings are very important for this process now what we have discussed Till now, the samples are entrapped into a matrix. Now, this is called the sample preparation phase. After that, what we need to do, we need to utilize laser to hit onto this sample. Okay. Now, here, one thing is very important that the sample and the matrix and the components for matrix like benzoic acid and cinnamic acid and the ratio of taking them. Now, here, you must know that the ratio of taking sample and, ma and matrix are very, very uh, different like the sample is to matrix is 1 is to 10,000 that's that much difference is there 1 is to 10,000 so the matrix components are taken 10,000 times than the sample because we are utilizing laser if we utilize much more sample and less matrix the laser is going to hamper our sample we don't want that because we need other matrix components and they contain the aromatic rings so when you heat them with laser, they are going to get the energy from the laser and as they are getting the laser energy, they will transfer this laser energy from them to the sample. But why we directly not hitting the sample with laser because it will, it will destroy our sample, right? So we are hitting the sample to the matrix components Then the matrix components are going to get the energy from the laser and they are going to provide the energy to the sample and as they are providing the energy to the sample so if, if I draw the matrix here so say this is the matrix and here is our sample now they are they are entrapped attached here and you are hitting them with laser as we are hitting the matrix with laser they are going to they are going to provide the energy to the sample and as they provide the energy to the sample the sample are getting kicked out Okay, so sample particle are getting kicked out because they are charged now. So as they are charged, I am denoting it with charge, but that this is not the exact. Uh, the charge usually is of positive charge. So they are getting charged, and as they are getting charged, they are dissolved from the matrix. That's why the term such as desorption. They are dissolved from the matrix. They are just coming out from the matrix because now they are charged they won't be entrapped into the matrix anymore because they are now getting excited and then the sample are getting molecular ionized so the samples then will generate this M plus molecular ion so this is the procedure we are not directly utilizing laser to the sample we are instead hitting the laser onto the matrix for that we need to prepare the matrix with some of the chemical compounds which are having aromatic rings the compounds are benzoic acid cinnamic acid and then they will transfer the energy to the sample samples are getting uh, ionized and they will dissolve from the matrix and you take them and you get the molecular ion so again it is called the molecular ion these are called fragment ions okay now let us look at 
the ESI process. Now this is a simple process. Now we can utilize it with different analyzer. TOF is a time of flight. This is a type of analyzer. This is a type of analyzer and detector that we can use. And after the using of it, we can look for the graph that are giving us or, or that is provided to us. Okay. Now here, in case of ESI. Uh, or electro spray ionization the process is different now here we also have the sample now we, here we take our sample say so here this is the sample the sample is coated with a liquid matrix not as a matrix this liquid solvent we can say so here this blue colored region is a liquid solvent now this liquid solvent so what we produce we produce a micro droplet and inside the micro droplet we are having our sample we have produced a micro droplet this is called a micro droplet now then in case of this esi this is suppose this is the source so whatever thing we have discussed that happened in the source region now here the sample is prepared as a micro droplet surrounding by the solvent now in this case the source is a uh, source region is having a high pressure content so we are highly giving we are giving high pressure to the source region as well as heat to the source region now the high pressure high pressure provided in the source region will eventually going to heat this micro droplet now as they are heating this micro droplet Hitting this micro droplet, then what is what is going on? This micro droplet and the solvents are getting evaporated, right? Because these are the solvents, they are getting evaporated. Now, as they are getting evaporated, as this sample or as this total micro droplet is going to get into the analyzer, they are getting much more heat. They are getting evaporated, so a very little amount of solvent will left, and finally, what we get, we get our molecular. Uh, we get our sample and the sample is getting ionized now if we utilize molecule directly without having any coat of the solvent in that high pressure that that is again going to hamper our hamper our sample so we need to take the sample and coat it with a solvent liquid layer and then we utilize into the pressure so that if the pressure is getting uh, giving the heat to this micro droplet water will evaporate not uh, water because this liquid solvent is also made up with water and nitrous uh, water and also uh, some chemical component i just forgot the name but as it it is going the uh, the liquid solvent is made with water and the chemical component in one is to one ratio and as it is traveling from the source region to the analyzer the solvent part is getting evaporated it will lead to the generation of only it is lead to the generation of only molecules and as as it getting heat it will produce this molecular ion so that's how it can generate molecular ion Okay, so constant heating due to the pressurization is going on here. Now, important fact about utilization of ESI is that we can utilize ESI in detecting large biological compounds such as peptides. So, we can take peptide change, we can take DNA, so we can analyze peptides, DNA, and all these things for the analysis utilizing this uh, ESI technique. So that's why this is very much important. We don't need to fragmentalize these peptides because in other type of like this multi-top processes, we must have fragmentalized that first. We must cut the peptides into smaller fragment of peptides or amino acid sequence. Then you can analyze it with multi-top. But in case of ESI, we can actually go with the larger macromolecules. Okay, so this is giving us the advantage. And for this process also, uh, we need a chemical environment, and the chemical environment provided in this case is due to the N2 gas in the whole source region. But in case of multi top, here we won't require any nitrogen gas. Instead, we need to have a vacuum, a highly, con uh, a highly controlled vacuum to have this process. But in case, in this case, in case of ESI, we require N2 gas. Now, after the whole process is done, as we are utilizing peptides and DNAs, which are large molecules, large biomolecules. Uh, macromolecules we need to attach some of the analyzers other analyzers except for this mass spec like the gas chromatography or the HPLC analyzer a high performance or high pressure liquid chromatography analyzer to finally detect the type of chemicals we are dealing with because the molecules we are dealing with is in this case they are pretty large okay so you can utilize this ESI process 
for this large compounds we can utilize this multi top process for the smaller compounds but both the type of you have seen that they are differing in their mechanism of the production of molecular ion from the sample but rest of the process will be the same after the production of the molecular ion it will enter into the analyzer it will further go and divide into the fragment ions and then the fragment ions will behave into the magnetic field differently and then we can select the type of fragment ions and they are going to hit onto the detector and they are going uh, and we can detect the presence of few fragment ions and by detecting the presence of fragment ions we can actually tell what kind of chemical molecules we are dealing with okay so this is about maldi and ESI, the different type of mass spec and I hope this will help you. Thank you.